right, I will call the meeting to order. Um, do we have any uh, agenda changes? I think so. No? Good. Okay, I um, do not have a chair's report today. Do we have any members who would like to speak? Seeing none. Citizens speak? Seeing none, we will begin with our priority business. And Suzanne Thomas, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, is it right I'll speak? Do you want to sit down? No, I don't. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm here to um, bring it to your attention that the town appointed a parking task force about a year ago. And the one of the challenges with parking in the summer is the number of buses who bring mm -hmm groups to Cahoon Hollow and then kind of distribute themselves all over town. So in July I was charged with working with the two companies that probably are 90% of the vehicles that come into town to find a place uh, on town owned property where um, they could park and not be like at the Dunkin Donuts parking lot and annoying people when they you know as they drive by. So the two bus owners uh, did a survey of Wellfleet, and they came to the conclusion that their first choice would be Wellfleet Elementary School parking. And I said, that's up to the school committee, which is why I'm bringing it to you. Two things. If you're willing to entertain the thought, there would be a financial piece and a written understanding. They estimated about $5,000 per summer per company for the, just the two of them and it would be more for individual buses who come in. It would be Saturdays and Sundays, with the exception of the first weekend in August, which is the Pan Mass Challenge, which is already spoken for. Okay. So um, hmm. be, instead of going to the um, work of putting together something in writing, I just thought I'd bring the concept to the board. And if you're okay with the concept, I would come back uh, a second time with something in writing for your consideration. Um, Thank you. Yes, more. That doesn't solve the problem about Cahoon Hollow, does it? They're dropping off the, the thousands of people and they're well, just parking. Well, that's a staffing issue that was addressed in great part last year by the police department and the beach department. So we just want to find a nice legal um, place for the buses mm -hmm. that will bring a little revenue to someone. And in this case, it would be to Wealthy Elementary School. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, you know... I used to have kids who are now way too old for Wellfield Elementary School, but um, to me, it's always like a field trip fund. I mean, there's something it could be earmarked yeah. for something yeah. that you don't currently Can have the flexibility to, to, to uh, fund completely. But that's why I'm here. Okay, hi, Jill. S Suzanne, thank you so much for coming to us. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the feely feeling part of it, you know, to um, explore it first mm -hmm. exactly. before things get. So uh -huh. just um, liability, who, who would be responsible if something happens to a bus on the school property? They would, uh, they being the bus company owners, would have to provide proof of insurance naming the town of Wealthy, or in this case, Wealthy Elementary School as also insured for a million dollars for any kind of damage. Any damage to their property on this, um, in this endeavor would be on them. There would be nothing um, unless... For instance, the parking lot developed a sinkhole unexpectedly, uh -huh. something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, which I don't think we don't have enough limestone around here to make that a possibility. Um, they also said that they would provide two portable toilets for the summer for their drivers. So their drivers could do the layover, the wait time, and comfort in their buses and have um, restroom facilities at the same time. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I wanted, Mar Martha, oh, yeah. you had your hand up. Which was answered, but I have a second question, and that is, um, I'm, I'm unclear about what the use of the buses are. Are they to store the buses that take people from different parking lots, beach parking yeah. lots, to Cahoon? These home? are chartered buses, chartered by groups of people who wish to go 99.5% of them to Cahoon Hollow yeah. for the day. Okay. And although there, the average number of buses on a Saturday is 10, 4th of July is an outlier, it's probably 20 over that weekend, but uh, the, the maximum number this summer, and there was a careful count kept every Saturday and Sunday at Cajun Hollow, was 10. On Sunday, the average is about 6. And during the week? We would not provide parking during the week because oh. it's de minimis, oh. the number of buses that show up during oh. the week. Yeah. Um, um, Jan? Yeah, I, 
I was going to ask you how many buses. We don't have room in our parking lot for 20 buses. Um, well, on 4th of July, you would have to be a capacity, a maximum capacity established by actually measuring the okay. lot, and that, yeah. that would be part of the agreement. And if they, <clears throat> the two companies that provide mo the majority are Cape Destinations um, and uh, Cape Cab, a.k.a. Funk Bus, yeah. You know, and Raphael from Funk Bus did say in the meeting we just had that many of his buses drop off, go and do other drop offs and pickups during the day, and then another bus comes and pick up picks up the party. There's not as much waiting as with um, Cape Destinations. But they, if you rent a bus from Cape Destinations, you rent it for the day, yeah, including so the, the downtime for the, the driver. The downtime for the yeah. driver, right? So not during the week, huh? No, not during the week. <clears throat> when do you need an answer? Susan? Well, I was hoping that maybe you'd have an answer today by your next, um, maybe discuss it again next time. The next time you have a school committee meeting, this is a, this has to be in place by May. Well, I would actually by May for sure, but I'd like to start notifying the companies that provide the buses no later than February that this is what's going to happen. So I would say, yeah. If we say no, what what is the next alternative? We don't have an alternative. Uh -huh. I said I wanted to come here and rule this out or find out that it was going to be accepted before we moved on to looking for a different space. Okay, so um, no, Tom, does the committee... Tom, does it, does it, may oh, I ask a question? Is that yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Am I right in assuming, because I, I, this is news to me quite honestly, that the buses that are in our parking lot will not have people on the bus? That's correct. They'll be I mean, empty that's buses. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I they will be empty it. buses. Okay, so that's that has to be a stipulation. Yeah. I just, well, except for the driver. Exactly. But I just don't want a busload of young, young, young adults. Uh, <laughs> Hooligans. Okay, that's great. <laughs> no, I mean, you, really, you really don't want the party people in party. your parking right. lot. Right. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. The designated driver. That would be my personal... Expectation. <clears throat> this is for empty buses. And I think we could build that into the contract. Absolutely. We? That Absolutely. this is this is only for empty buses yeah. coming yeah. in. I, mm -hmm. I just I can see some real problems if it isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be overnight. It would just oh, no, be no, during, during the day. daytime only. Okay. Yeah. Mary uh, Beth. And may I just ask a question? So it would be five thousand per bus company per summer. That's what they uh, that's what they estimate. And right now there are two bus companies. Mm -hmm. So potentially ten thousand dollars. Potentially it would school. be the minimum because there's a as many buses as there's like a 10% unaccounted for by pro, like one time deal where they would have to pay um, the $50. It, they, they, they're working on a $50 per diem per bus estimate. That's where they got their, their um, figures from. Mm -hmm. And anybody who wanted to come in would have to pay in advance and be sent the parking permit to display of the bus when they come. And that would be the whole deal of turning it over to the school is a separate issue. I mean, that's not even on the radar right now. It's your consideration of the other suggestion. Jan? Um, the rec department, mm -hmm. do they use our school on weekends at all? Mm, no. No, I don't think so. No. I don't think I'm so. Not, no, I don't Because during so. the week, Yes. You know, mm -hmm. they do. And a lot balls outside in yeah, the summer. Yeah, down at Baker's And they don't move into weekend use of the school building that I'm aware of until after Labor Day. After Labor Day. Yeah. Okay, because, yeah. I mean, that's sure. a consideration. Sure. Who else might be wanting to right. park here? And the good thing is the sidebar, sometimes during the week, even though there won't be buses here, they've been using the gym for indoor rec because it's raining. We're going to yeah. have a permanent yeah. pavilion with side curtains so that even rainy days will happen at Bakersfield now. Hmm. They won't be Wonderful. in the school building. Hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tom? Just another question. Do, do we have the ability to look at other situations like this that uh, other communities who potentially are renting out this sort of parking and, and then get a, a figure that uh, we, we're able to research versus the company giving us the number? I don't know if it exists, but my resource would be to go to the companies and ask them if they know of any similar arrangements. Um, failing that, I can put out my network to the 
beach managers of Southeast Massachusetts. Yes. Yes. I, just, I just think yes. it's, yeah. we're doing our it's due diligence to look at the yeah. Right. A lot of towns ban buses altogether from right. beach parking mm -hmm. lots, so there's got to be an alternative place for buses in a lot of the towns. Gotcha. And they've been parking over by the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, apparently, and this is only... Yeah. Hearsay. You know, mm -hmm. Hearsay. <laughs> maybe third-hand hearsay. Um, one or two of the bus companies have an agreement with the owner of that parking lot to park up to five or six buses at a time. And I heard they were unhappy about it. Well, well I think that may have morphed into not working <clears throat> for that owner, but I, think <clears throat> all, you know, okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I can suspect, but I don't know. Um, would the committee like to discuss this further at our next meeting, and then we can contact Suzanne? I'd like to have after more that. information from Suzanne about what other towns do, as Tom has asked. Well, I, with your permission, I will reach out to see if I can get the information. I will send it to your chair, who can then distribute it by email Certainly. for your consideration for your next yeah. uh, discussion. Do you want me to come back or just send the information? What does the team think? Send the information, Suzanne. You're a busy woman. You know where to find me. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then we can um, yeah. contact you if we're ready for you to. Right. If the get decision is to go forward, then there would be a creation of a contract and back and forth. And then we'd have you back for that. Um, set before anything is confirmed. Okay. They, the bus companies may also have a contract that they use with other towns which could be a starting place for us yeah um, my suspicion is somewhere in the file labeled boilerplate legal agreements the town of Wellfleet might have something under B yeah, yeah under B. B. there also was a time when the housing um, uh, the um, committee studying parking I uh, was talking about easing the burden of parking in downtown and talking about having overflow parking of cars in our parking lot and a little minibus to bring them back and forth into into town. Um, They're working right now on putting their recommendations to the selectmen and um, satellite parking with a shuttle bus either here or um, the sand pit has been mentioned. Mm. Um, was not among their recommendations uh, okay. because the chairman of the select board was there and she said, I don't want to spend the money on a study about that right now. So. Okay. Which I thought was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just asking for this piece. Thank you. <laughs> and I will get that information to you. And thank you for letting me go first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Betsy, do you have my email? Um, I do not. Okay, let me give you my card. So when it comes in, you'll know it's on some. Great. So I'll reach out to you tonight and just say... That way you'll have my email. Perfect. And, uh, Thank you, ma'am. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks. Have a great meeting. <laughs> okay, next on our agenda is our strategic plan presentation. So let me just uh, open this up, uh, and then Maxine's going to jump in on this. <clears throat> Clearly, um, we've had conversations around the strategic planning, and, and it's important to understand that the goal of this work, this body of work, which I think is, is excellent work uh, to this point, is to have the entire system know exactly mm -hmm. what the, the major themes of this strategic mm -hmm. plan is. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Ann this morning about this, of thinking, I don't want to play games with it, but I don't also want to be in a situation that when I ask somebody, so what do you think about the five themes, and which one do you find to be the most interesting? Do you, I would expect them to have an answer of saying, well, you know, mm -hmm. I, I global education is really right up my alley or something like that. Because, because what we're going to do then is we're going to blend this in with our school improvement plans. Mm -hmm. And it's safe to say um, we have 
in the in the district uh, a number of years that we work, we work on these plans. They're going to be yearly plans, and it's going to have a relationship with a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And the principals already know this, but uh, we also see the possibility of Mary Beth in this case working with some teachers, talking about their efforts to meet the st the strategic plan, mm -hmm. and in some cases suggesting coursework or other activities or possibly. Uh, professional development to be able to move this forward for us. So there's a purpose to this through the whole system, mm -hmm. uh, not just something that it's a document. And mm -hmm. quite honestly, you've heard me say before that gets on a shelf and sits there and, mm -hmm. and gets no active. Wasted time. This is going to be a robust uh, uh, move for this district going forward. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you to Maxine. She's, uh, she's putting a tremendous amount of time into this and uh, very well organized. So thank you, Maxine. With might say. But let me first give you, we don't have a presentation per se, but we have a PowerPoint that will be in front of you. Okay. And Martha, who is a member of the steering committee, will be helping me in a major way present. So, that has been terrific. It's just, it's just Okay, so I wanted to start by just defining what do we mean by strategic planning and why is it important? You know, so, obviously, strategic planning is the process of deciding, of, of setting goals, of determining the best ways to achieve those goals and the resources that are needed in order to make that happen. What's most important is that, a done right, a strategic plan impacts teaching and learning, mm -hmm. which is what it's about <coughs> and what the focus is on this plan in particular. So what it doesn't do is get into the nitty gritty. Of Thank you. Is that that? What it doesn't do is get into the nitty gritty of everything a school does or everything that happens in this, on a school day. Um, that's beyond the scope. This provides a big picture of the major themes, the major new initiatives, or ongoing initiatives, I should say, that are going to be a priority for the district over the next five years. Okay. And it also speaks to why the district feels it's important to achieve these goals through its by by defining core values and mission and vision. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, for a district like Nauset, with five school committees, mm -hmm. four towns, it's particularly important that we have this kind of a compass because it lets everyone move in the same direction, track progress, and allow that, allow the pace, of, and allows us to keep pace with the changing world so our kids are prepared for it. So if you, one of the characteristics of a good plan is what we need to think about and which we have thought about, and first and foremost, it has to be future focused. Because the whole idea is looking at what's happening in the world, where is society going, and what does school need to do so we are current with that, as opposed to always lagging behind? So we need to think futuristically as we do this. Needs to be collaborative. There's no point in a group of people sitting down making a plan for a district when the stakeholders, all the stakeholders, aren't on some level involved. And we're at the point now, in particular, where we're really working to expand our base and, and get many more people involved into what, be, what actually becomes a roadmap, hopefully for schools in these particular areas. It's also important that it gets rolled out over time, because if we are talking about a number of initiatives, no school has the capacity to deal with five, ten initiatives at one time. So there needs to be a plan that takes place over time 
and is doable if thought through carefully and keeping in mind everything else that's going on in, in a school district. Uh, needs to be contextual. Teachers, faculty need to understand why these are important goals. Mm. What What is it about the world today that make these important and how does it fit in with everything else that they're doing? Or how does everything else they're doing get funneled in to these goals? <laughs> there needs to be consistency, not only <coughs> grade to grade, across the district, the districts and the towns, but also um, grade by grade. It needs to be alignment. So there's continuity and um, reliability. They need to be practical. If it doesn't get to a point where teachers say, I can do this, it's not going to happen. And finally, need to be socially responsible. I mean, we're talking about how we fit into an ever-changing world, and we need to be able to do that. But the plan is only as good as its implementation. You can have anything on paper, but and it can't be stagnant. It has to be organic. It has to evolve over time as needs change, and things are changing very rapidly. So it's an ongoing, constant pro process. Ahead. This this all started with Tom. <laughs> Tom asked me to chair the committee in February and put together a core group with representatives from each school committee. Martha being, thank goodness, a member. And that's just because she's been wonderful. No, not, not, nothing about anyone else. Um, and representatives from faculty, from administrators, and community members. And what, at this point, as I said before, what we really need to do is engage more stakeholders. So that in the development of specific initiatives as they relate to teaching and learning in the schools. The next page. Oh. When you yes. say more. Do you, talk, do you mean outside of the school? No, I mean in some, both within? in and out. I'm talking about teachers, mm -hmm. more administrators, more school committee, okay. community members, and <coughs> parents. All right. Everyone. You know, because everyone with an impact. We'll talk more about that towards okay. the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, one of the first things we did after the committee was formed was... Um, to review school and community data. We wanted to make sure that we knew the students. Um, and we also wanted to determine how the demographics might be trending. Before you look at this, there are a couple of points that I want to make just to clarify some things that might not be clear. You notice that there's a line under each of the schools that talks about um, high needs. Um, high needs actually refers to an un duplicated count of students that would belong to at least one of the following categories. The first one is special needs. The second one is English language learners. The third one is former English language learners who have uh, left the program uh, no more than two years ago. And the final one is low income students who are, um, those are the children who are uh, eligible for free or reduced lunch. The second point I wanted to make was that the student-teacher ratio is not at all reflective of class size. Um, teachers include all teachers, not just classroom teachers, but specialists such as art, music, phys ed teachers, um, and also counselors, psychologists, teachers of small self-contained classrooms. The ratio does reflect resources available in each school. So as you look at this, you get some pictures of what our school looks like and what some of the other schools in the district look like. And this helped us form some of our decisions. The next slide is um, very texty. But it's, it's a very important slide. We did a lot of research on educational trends. 
and what we came up with is that 20th century schools were based on a teaching culture. 21st century schools are moving towards a learning culture. Changes occur in society's expectations of schools over time, and these changes happen with societal changes, changes in technology, communication, uh, transportation, economics, demographics. Um, our district is in the midst of making these changes. It's not that Nauset is not operating as a learning community, but there's more to do. If you look at the column of bullets under 20th century schools teaching, color, teaching culture and look, compare it to uh, the bullets under 21 century schools learning culture, um, you can see that there's really a con continuum. And um, the continuum on the left side, 20th century schools, is one point on the continuum, and the far point on the continuum is the 21st century school. Um, we need a consistent, systematic plan to make changes across the schools and across the curriculum. We need to expand our repertoire of teaching strategies, and we need to, in each school, in each classroom in the district, make sure that everybody arrives at the same point in the continuum. And that continuum is so that each school is part of a deeply embedded culture. So spend a few minutes looking at that, and if there's anything you don't understand or any comments you want to make at this point, it might be good. Can I add something? Sure, please. Yeah, just one thing. This this um, image or comparison came after the research on current educational trends, the educational trends of the future, and once we put them all together, say, let's look at the differences of how things are changing over time. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's a culmination of the different pieces of research that we found. Thank you. The next slide is um, one of three that are very important. Um, we thought it was important to include the definitions that we're using for core values, mission, and vision so that we all have the same reference point. Core values are the heart and soul of a school district, our fundamental beliefs that will guide our decision making and our actions. We had many serious, thoughtful con conversations about core values. And we felt that the current value from the former strategic plan, every child matters, is very, uh, very, very powerful. It sets the tone that the committee wants to maintain. We provided a context for what we believe is a criti was critical. We felt that education should inspire a passion for learning. The other values complement every child matters, and they focus on all children and our belief that each child needs to be regarded as an individual and deserves to feel safe physically and emotionally in order to take risks, ask questions, make mistakes, fail, and try again. Martha, this, the page, the core values, is this a, I don't see any change from what we already have, or is it a change? Um, is there a is a change. Oh, yeah. We, I think we had one core value, and that was every child matters. Is the is the only overlapping one actually? Yeah. We've always felt that every child is. I don't see anything new. On this. It, it's it's not, not a new it, right. Just, it, I don't think it's a new philosophy <clears throat> at Nauset in the district okay. at all. But I think this is the first time it's really been put into a strategic okay. plan. I think maybe. Feeling safe is a new concept that we didn't used to have to even consider. But between mm -hmm. um, technology problems and, and bullying mm -hmm. and all of those current things, it's right. become a very important. It, it's it's it has risen up. It's paramount. I think that's true. And there's also, I think, more of a focus on inspiring a passion for learning mm -hmm. than just academic achievement. Mm -hmm. 
which of course is important, but we're really looking for the flame <laughs> and that's that, going to ignite that in students. That came up over and over again as we were discussing mm -hmm. this, that that word passion mm -hmm. um, was key for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that moved us then to, so what's our mission? Now the mission is a description just quite simply of what the district does, who it serves, and why does it exist? What is its core reason for being? It's a simple statement and it is a brief statement that we put together as Nauset Public Schools prepares each student to succeed in an ever-changing world by providing a rigorous academic program that integrates social-emotional learning and global awareness. And I think what's different here, and the stress here, is on the global awareness as well as on the social-emotional the social -emotional learning. Would you define what you mean by global awareness? Oh, we'll get to that soon. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely will. You have that to look forward to. Every every school committee does matter. That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't be here otherwise. Well, she just told me to shut up. I did not. <laughs> I heard it more. <laughs> I told him to settle down. <laughs> well, you know, that's not too far apart. <laughs> okay. And then we developed a vision. Now the vision, the vision to me has always been the most exciting, frankly, of the process because it's the statement that says, if you close your eyes and think about what the district would look like five years from now, this is what we would see. And even if we're not there totally, we're well on our way. So the vision says that Nauset Public Schools will prepare students to be lifelong, self-directed learners and contributing members of society. We will provide enriching, diverse, and innovative opportunities within the school culture where both adults and children are seen as learners who have an active voice and ownership of their learning experiences. By learning how to think critically, problem solve, and collaborate with others, students will be able to reflect on their learning, set goals for themselves, and persevere when facing obstacles in a complex world. We will foster a global perspective through authentic learning experiences, expansion of the traditional classroom beyond the wall of the schools, and development of educational partnerships and opportunities across the community, the United States, and countries worldwide. And that does reflect a movement forward, I think. So. I thought of something very important that yeah. I did forget to say, and that is um, we are not saying in any of our work mm -hmm. that the district is not operating a on a learning culture. level um, in a learning culture. Um, it's just that everybody seems to be at a different place and we want to get everyone to the same place. And I neglected to say that there is so much that's wonderful that's going on right now in our schools. It's clear. Um, the purpose of our strategic plan is to improve learning outcomes. As we continue to move from a teaching culture to a learning culture, this graphic, um, my copy is awful, I hope yours is better. Oh, it is, good, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've got all these lines all over that. As we continue to move from a teaching culture to a learning culture, this graphic can serve as a visual reminder to all of us district-wide of where Nasset is going. It's a reflection of where our research has led us. These five areas best capture the current educational trends critical for preparing students to meet societal changes. And on the next page, 
the moment Do you, want you to name them? I, I can't. Can you oh, sure. Um, well, I will name them anyway. They are 21st century skills, global citizenship, social emotional learning, professional development, and community schools. And to um, actually answer a question that will definitely come up. Technology was not listed as one of our goals because we feel that technology is woven through everything we do and everything we will do in terms of these goals and be integrated with it as per our new technology plan, which has just come out. Also, it's important to say if we were thinking what the vision five years from now for technology we couldn't say. It just changes too fast and, then, and and it's always moving. So it makes sense to keep that um, organic. I will, um, to the best of my ability, explain these five goals to you. And if you have any questions, you can either ask them when I finish or um, send an email. Sure. to Maxine, or you're invited to a summit meeting tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, .30 at the administration building if you have more questions. Is and that a question time? Is that yes. That well, well, yeah. Besides this, I mean, yeah. fine with your That's asking questions now, but it's also a meeting. conversation. Conversation. Yeah. Um, so these are our actual strategic goals. And the first goal is 21st century skills. Um, we are hoping to help students develop the capacity to think on their feet, to problem solve, to deal with messy situations, to discern fact from fiction both online and offline, um, and think abstractly. To be self-directed learners, our students need to find their own voices and gain some control over their own learning. The second goal is global citizenship. Students must develop skills to live in a global community because we are all dependent on each other worldwide. We need to understand each other and work together, learning languages, understanding and respecting our other cultures, improving communication and seeing sustainability as a global issue. The third goal is social emotional learning. Um, we feel that students, especially now, need guidance with social emotion, their social emotional lives as well as their academic lives in order to grow into responsible, empathetic adults, comfortable enough with who they are to be able to accept others for who they are. Uh, professional development, we hope, is very much integrated into this whole plan. Um, we want professional development to provide direction for how we can reach these goals, objectives, and implement the initiatives in the strategic plan. Learning for adults has changed as much as learning for children has. We need to honor this by providing faculty with the tools they need to help the students. And finally, community schools um, focuses on the need for school and community to come together, support each other, enrich each other, and learn from each other. And, and I would say, may I? Yeah. In your, um, I'm going to be passing out to you in a bit a summary of the trends that when we did our worst when we did our research, we identified. Um, we actually have a separate page summarizing the research. Um, included in, in addition to the five goals, there's a page on sustainability, which we have put under global citizenship, and a page on technology. So we will be handing that out to you today. But those really were the background um, for the goals we've developed. On the next page, you can see the process of the Strategic Plan Committee um, and our work since actually January of 2019. Right now, we're at the point of sharing our accomplishments to date and also sharing what work lies ahead. 
Um, now we'd like you to step forward. We need your feedback on what we've done so far, and we'd like you to join us as we move forward to develop an exciting, realistic plan to turn the vision into reality over the next five years. To that end, we're creating five working groups, one for each goal, responsible for developing district objectives and initiatives for its particular goal. We anticipate the meetings to go from November to February with each group completing its task in four to six meetings. And Maxine will explain. So let me pass out a few things for you yeah. now. I mean, at this point, it's very critical, as Martha was saying, that other people get involved. You know, I've been going around, we've been going around, um, different members of, this, of the steering committee have been coming, presenting with me to faculties so that all the faculties will hear pretty much what you have heard and have an opportunity to sign up pledge their life away. What? You are signed up. up. I know you are. Can we pass this around? And more com school committee members, we certainly welcome yes. your input. We have a recruitment flyer for you. If we have not inspired you, that's what this is for. Oh, mm -hmm. also, what well, we have not mentioned, oh, here. And finally, here is your sign-up sheet. Anyone who is interested in being on one of the working committees. So how that's working, how that will work is this. For each of the goals, we are going to have a working group that meets to determine for that strategic goal specific strategic objectives still broad and for each of those objectives a few initiatives that schools can work on at their own level and in accordance in accordance to what fits for their school okay. and that that's what Tom was talking about earlier as becoming incorporated into the school improvement plan so we really want to drill down and get more specific at the place where the teaching and learning takes place. <clears throat> but, so we have, if you look at this sheet, you'll see, check your role. We're trying to get, we are getting administrators, um, teachers from all levels, someone who really has, make sure we have a teacher who's done a lot of integration of technology into the curriculum areas community, school committee, parents, students, and we are promised students, and um, if possible town representatives, all are invited to be part of a working committee. The working committees will be meeting from November through February, four to six meetings we feel will do it, and no meeting will last more than two hours. <laughs> so we're trying to make it manageable and we do want to get done by our deadline. We do want this to come before you by April. That's it. In terms Any of questions? time of day, it might help you to know that since we're hoping that we have a lot of Teachers. faculty members, um, we have to meet after school hours. So it would be late afternoon. Happy to entertain any questions, or I know you have an agenda. So very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Oh, there is one other thing that we didn't say. Oh, we don't website. say it on this. Yeah, thank you. Website's beautiful. Read my mind. <laughs> I was thinking before. Go on. Um, we have a wonderful website that was developed by one of our members. Oh, Judy um, Schumann. Yeah. Um, and it is fantastic. It's mm -hmm. very, very useful. You'll find all of this information and more on it. Um, it you just go to the Norfolk Public Schools website and
there is a section about the strategic plan right on the home page. And if you just click on the website. All right, so how do I get there again? Nosset Public Schools uh, homepage. Just scroll down to the news about the strategic plan and the website is. There's a link. There's a link. Now, most impressive is Judy. Had never done a website before. And she said, I want to learn. And I think it took her two to three weeks, and it really beautiful. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, it has more of the references that we use, the research that we use, the background, anything we've shared with you now. And um, you're more than welcome to give us suggestions to add to <coughs> them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wow. These trends are very helpful. Yes. Yeah, reading those yeah. helps a lot. Thank you. Well, I, I just have one overall question, like I asked before, as I asked before. Is there something that we are doing now and have been doing that you're trying to improve on with this new plan? Uh, yeah, I mean... Can be more specific? Um, I think maybe if we look back at the, I think it's... Page eight, nope. <clears throat> that. Oh, um, it's it's the bullets. Yeah, if but you... but more specific. I could I could talk more okay, specifically about some things in the yes. schools. More of the um, project based learning, mm -hmm. where kids are actually using what they've mm -hmm. learned and applying it to some real life problem. Mm -hmm. More focus on celebrating and understanding diversity, mm -hmm. um, sustainability, you know, we have done a lot in all schools on environmental issues on the Cape, and we're looking at taking that and going to the coves and going to the water and mm -hmm. testing the water and cleaning up beaches, and we're looking at that in terms and having five gyres at the schools to mm -hmm. teach kids about why it's so important mm -hmm. globally and expanding on that so it's not just environmental, but it's also economic, mm -hmm. sustainability, and understanding the connections. We've done some, I know we had done at the middle school, some um, FaceTiming with kids in other countries, mm -hmm. you know, and electronic pen pals for that. Certainly every school has a number of things. I know that Mary Beth can speak to how joining becoming more of a community school inviting the community in even the conversation before about the buses is a sample of life. the school has to be a major piece of the community and invite the community not keep it at bay so I think there are examples in all the areas also I'm just looking at uh, the teaching culture of four walls, rows and columns of quiet attention. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't spent very much time in the middle or high school, but I have spent quite a lot of time in this school. And I don't think there, there I'm pretty sure there is not a single classroom that is arranged that way anymore. They're much more flexible in all kinds of learning spaces in the classroom. So as far as that bullet goes, mm -hmm. we're, we're... And even at the middle school, there are times where we have asked kids, okay, this class hasn't worked for you. Come up, let's come up with a program for you, so it's more self-directed, and students have more say in their learning. There are lots of different things that have been done, and lots, lots more that can be. Yes, Jim. This is a wonderful project. It's a wonderful document. I thank, thank everybody you. who's worked so hard on this. It's so comprehensive, and I'm very excited too about the passion. I think most of you know I have all kinds of degrees in education, and one thing that always comes so clear is curiosity is the greatest motivating factor in learning, yeah, well, and to tap on that to facilitate learning is just I thrilling. Just so, one question, the focus group leaders, would they be people who have already participated in this group? Oh, let me say, members of the core committee will right. be on every committee and I will be facilitating all the working committees. Thank you. And I just want to thank oh, my I'm so sorry. school committee for allowing me. I, I have to say it's been one of the most amazing ex experiences I've had while being on the school committee. I've learned so much 
Um, I've loved every minute of it, almost every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Martha, for thank all you. your thank work. Thank you so much. <clears throat> wow. I was getting emails from all talk about global from Scotland, Ireland. <laughs> Oh, that was me. I know. That's my point. <laughs> oh, wherever she goes, she's thinking about it. Yes, that's my point. Um, I have one thing. This is offline, yes. but I just want to say I don't see the website link here. I, I know we this was an old Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, questions? Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Say, Maxine, that you are going to be at all of the four to six meetings from November to February in all five categories. Yeah, I thought you did. <laughs> she doesn't know how to retire. <laughs> <coughs> Mary Beth, I think we're ready for your report. So just a couple of additions, actually three additions, I believe, to um, my report. The MCAS report cards are in, and they will be mailed home to families tomorrow throughout the district uh, with the plan that all families will receive them on Thursday. And I wanted to share, um, Heidi Filmer Gallagher is our art teacher, and she did the project-based learning course this summer with MIT and uh, Dr. Grenier. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to give you sort of an overview that she created relative to the PBL that she's doing with grade five. Mm -hmm. And it's she titled it JAWS. Oh. So mm -hmm. it's about, you know, a real human-centered problem being the shark population increase and how can we as humans live in harmony with sharks. So the students have created these little mini uh, beach oceans, or ocean beaches, she calls them. Mm -hmm. And they are paint pans. So you'd have, I'd have to bring one next time for you to see it. So they're doing everything to scale in terms of that's the ocean in the deep end of the paint mm -hmm. um, pan. And then the beach is up at the, um, the other end. So they're going to be, they research, they were broken up into groups, so generally you have about four students per group, broken up into groups, and together they brainstormed different ideas that are a problem that needs a solution relative to JAWS, mm -hmm. and so those kids did research um, online with other periodicals. They came back together and they created posters with facts from each of the groups. So each group had their own poster board. And so now they're moving into the phase where they're going to come up with the prototypes being a solution that the group has come up for. And they would like to be able to present those to the school community. They would like to present them if there's another shark forum in the community because that's one of the big pieces of project-based learning. Not only are the kids driving what the research needs to be to get to a solution, they're creating whatever the solution could be and then presenting it to a larger audience. <clears throat> and so um, Mrs. Gallagher has also invited the press to be here. So we've had somebody from the Provincetown Independent mm -hmm who is following this story. So again, it's another way to connect to the community, to bring what we're doing inside to the outside. And I just wanted to share with you sort of the overview. And the timeline is a little short on this particular PBL because they're getting together for their last class. Uh -huh. So it had to be done. Mm -hmm. Generally, it would probably go a little longer. And that's why everything's being done in a mini form because of the time frame. So I wanted to give you that. And the other partnership that's exciting is from the Wealthy Historical Society, mm -hmm. is partnering with grades three, four, and five. And so they're working on what their uh, projects together will be, and they can be in field trip form, or the person can come here. And I believe your name is Cheryl Jaffe, is that correct? And so grade five, one of the topics that they're considering are uh, tools used during colonial times compared to tools used today. Grade four, map making, wealth lead past and present. Mm -hmm. And grade three, wealth leads, wealth lead connecting to whaling. Mm. 
okay? So that's what they're thinking about. And then the only other piece I wanted to add to my report from uh, the school council meeting is that I probably should have included that at the meeting we talked about the guidelines that had come forward relative to ELA, math, science, and history and social science. Um, any questions? I think Jill's got a Jill? suggestion. Uh, mm -hmm. This is so exciting about JAWS. Uh, it's probably too late for this year, or maybe not, mm -hmm. but there's that national, national, there's the uh, annual State of the Harbor Conference. I believe it's the first Saturday in November. And this is the sort of thing that would be just wonderful yeah. for a presentation, Absolutely. if not this year, next year. But there are so many people that go to this, you know, so many diverse people in the community. Um, this would be quite the place to present. Thank you. Whether sure it's a there. presentation, oral presentation, and then questions afterwards, or an exhibit. Thank you. I'm pretty sure it's the first Saturday in yeah. November. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Yes. I have a question about this. Mrs. Clark has mm -hmm. six students. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Does she have all six at the same time? Or? We have two classrooms. So this is our substantially separate special needs classrooms. So the students are getting older <clears throat> now. And we had to create two classrooms because there is a cut off of 48 months, so we can't have a kindergartner in the same classroom as a fourth grader. So we now have three special needs, intense special needs students in one room and three in the other. And who's? We have ed assistants, okay. special needs educational assistants. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've answered my question. Thank you. Any other uh, questions <clears throat> about Mary Beth's report? Comments? Um, will we be getting um, a rundown of the MCAS tests yes, next, in November. next time? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we're on to Tom. So thank you, Bessie. Uh, what's coming around now, uh, as you I'm sure remember very well, is that uh, October 1 is a huge date for us in terms of our enrollment number. This is what we lock in at, and this is what drives us from here uh, all the way through the budget process and uh, so forth. So this is a sheet that I can tell you that the FinComs and the Board of Selectmen are very eager to see mm -hmm. because it gives them a pretty clear idea in terms of what they're looking at from a budget standpoint um, relative to uh, particularly the region. So let me just walk you through this um, just a little bit. And uh, once again, at the very top of this, you can see what's happening in our elementary settings, uh, of course, including Wellfleet uh, Elementary. I would tell you, remember now, that uh, the number that we're reflecting in Wellfleet Elementary doesn't have the preschool program that we had a year ago. Um, that has moved over to East Ham. So, but that's still mm -hmm. a robust number for us at 108. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and I think that uh, for it's safe to say across the board we are flat at best in terms of the district with its elementary schools. And, uh, and, and, and it's safe to say that uh, the percentage increase for Wallfleet was the highest in terms of the elementary increase. <laughs> Um, and then as you work down through this, um, you can see that uh, we now lay out as well the, the middle school situation. And you can see to the far right, this is a really complicated conversation sometimes with uh, the communities and the boards relative to the Truro situation and the Provincetown situation. And when do they pay choice and when do they pay tuition, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, simple, the, the simple answer to that is when they don't have that grade, um, they're in a situation where they have to pay tuition. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and as you're well aware, they don't have uh, public high schools, and so you can see, of course, that's an area where they have to pay. We then, at the bottom of this, uh, give you the high school numbers. Um, and. Uh, you don't know it. I have for my notes. I know whether these enrollments are up or down and so forth, but uh, I can tell you once again across the, the region they're flat uh, when you combine both the middle school and uh, the high school numbers. And then you can see the summary at the beginning. And then the interesting piece on the back side of this 
is um, breaking down the Masset uh, region, and you can see that we begin. I'll just work, you know you you have to take some time with this. This isn't something that you just uh, you just look at it once and you figured it out. But you can see that we've tried to give some type of history in terms of what's happened with the enrollment trends. And you can see at the very top, uh, as, as I'm looking at the uh, Nusset uh, High School, you can see in 2019 uh, we're reporting 616 students who attend that school from the district. And you can see the past history as you go down the list in terms of uh, over, the, over, over a number of years. This is the one doing the change of time. School. And uh, then you can see if you go across that same information, you're getting information about students who are coming in uh, from Provincetown, from Choice, and so forth. And then as you go down below this, uh, you can see the middle school is doing basically the same effort in the middle of the page. And then as you get down to the bottom half of this, we're actually giving really specific information to where, where in the Choice program are kids coming from, what towns do they come from, and uh, and, and so forth. The same with the middle school. And then, um, I know I'm going fast, and I know Joe, we'll spend some time with this and we can revisit this if, if need be. Uh, when you get down to the other piece of it, you're seeing um, students who um, are attending other, other schools. Um, and then at the very bottom, you can see um, we're reporting our international student program. That is basically over as we know it. Um, and uh, just, just that's a true statement, but we have a plan going forward that will be far more robust than it was ever. Now, what, what has driven it to this point is that uh, you can look at those numbers yourself and realize that at one time we were really picking the number we wanted to somewhere between 15 or 20 students we were taking in. We were one of the few uh, high schools in the state of Massachusetts who were doing this with, in, through agencies. But over time, as schools were looking, even on the Cape, what NASA was doing, everyone else was starting to say, if NASA's doing it and this is working so well, we want to get in with that agency. And the agencies eventually went national, and the, and the numbers of kids are limited to, to what agencies can bring in, and you can see it reflects that number. We are moving to a private school model. And the private school model will have, and it just happens that the timing is perfect, is that uh, 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 Dr. El Sasser, our principal, his background is private schools. And we are now working on what countries and what agents do we want to work with specifically around the world. And like a private school, we will have partners here. We will have specific people, whether they be teachers, administrators, or or in some cases, a couple of retired teachers who will actually travel to meet with our agent in Cambodia, in Germany, in France, in Italy. And so we'll be dealing directly with our agents, like a private school, in those countries we've chosen to do uh, our work with. And so that's in the works as we speak. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have a model in place as early as next fall to begin that process. So that's a shift we're making with international students going forward. I will tell you, it's an interesting discussion. I, I might have shared this with you before, but uh, you have to understand there's a different, um, different rules for private schools and public schools. Public schools are allowed to bring students in for one year. Private schools are allowed by law to bring them in for four years. Totally different game. And, uh, and so we've even had conversations with private schools in terms of the possibility of one of their kids coming in under the four-year rule, maybe doing a prep year at Nauset and then going for back to that, that private school. So we have a lot of things in the works, and it, it ties in with the whole concept of this global awareness and the opportunity to expand our opportunities for our students in, in multiple ways with these partnerships. So there's a lot of information here. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I would advise uh, taking some time with it, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions now or questions going forward to begin to understand where this is at. 
Uh, it is safe to say that I'm asked uh, in many, many meetings about uh, the trends that I see as a superintendent who worked uh, across uh, the aisle with all of the superintendents on this. We've been uh, advised by experts and demographics that the numbers will be flat in general. And uh, if anything, across the Cape, there is some prediction that um, we could anticipate a 1% decline in students on a yearly basis uh, over uh, a period of 20 years. So that's where we are. Jan? There's been a little bit of a decline, at least in the last couple of years, of kids leave that were leaving for Sturgis and Lighthouse mm -hmm. have decreased. Yeah, exactly. That has decreased. I, That's a it's really too good. early to say it's a trend, but I'd love to think that it might start a trend. Yeah, the, the interesting piece, Jan, when I look at it, and I can go deeper into this, uh, I've talked to Anna at length about this. Often geographics play a piece in where kids come from. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's a small number for us of, of students that go to Hyannis to school. Right. And I think nine of those students live in Brewster. <laughs> and, 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 uh -huh. and I once was told, uh, as the high school principal, it's that logical. some parents in that, I guess it's uh, west of uh, Brewster, I'm not sure, the far reaches of Mr. Dennis, that, that it's almost yeah. 22, 23 miles to get to the high school yes. one way. It's a 50-mile round trip to, <clears throat> to go to your home high school. So I see that. But that plays into it somewhat. Of course it it but I can tell you, this is a serious yeah. issue. I know of, <clears throat> of a school on the Cape. Um, good size school that is writing a check for four million dollars before they even start the budget process for mm. their their cost of of sending uh, tuition uh, kids to tuition payments for the, the uh, well, actually that doesn't count transportation it's just tuition. that's tuition. Wow. so uh, um, we're, we're thank we're, you for this yeah. very much so mm. we're pleased with the numbers mm. I will tell you um, if, if you attend any of the meetings that we're having on the new building project, it will get into school choice, it will get into tuition, it will be, I'll be talking with Toro and Provincetown and things like that. But the bottom line is relative to these numbers is that um, we, we, we recognized years ago um, that uh, uh, the AP program was robust, but International Baccalaureate has a great future for us. And we're in our second year at the high school mm -hmm. and we saw our numbers jump um, in an impressive way in the second year. And we know that there are hundreds of kids on the Cape that can't get into National Baccalaureate. There are only two of us now that have it, Sturgis and Nossum. And we have the diploma program. We were approved into that. So it's going to take us a time to build it out. Mm -hmm. And we, we're building it out with our yeah. existing staff, Bring not necessarily people. adding staff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so um, I think it's great news for Wellfleet Elementary. Wow, it's, uh, that's a great number for us. It couldn't it's get much better than that. And, uh, and if we could keep that going for a couple of years, we'd be sitting really <laughs> Especially with the departure. Of the, so, right, you know. The so, um, and feel free if there's other questions I can answer. You want to give me a call or anything relative to that, I'd be happy. But it's it's a, a lot of information there in, mm. in, in a couple of pages. Okay. I do want to give you a, a heads up that I am working with a number of people on cybersecurity. We are getting um, more and more uh, letters from our associations and from our state mm -hmm. relative to the, uh, the occurrence of uh, cyber hits happening more and more in public schools. Mm -hmm. And I am working with uh, a number of people, including the distinct possibility of tying it in with our police chiefs in our school system, district-wide, to apply for a grant for up to $200,000. And that would begin our process of working system-wide to begin to look at the safety factors that we have to consider uh, going forward. For instance, number one, any and all organizations who are moving forward with this initiative have to understand the data it has and the data it wants to be protecting, i.e. any personal information, anything to do with payroll, on and on, is critical information. I will tell you, this day is coming, and it's, it's changing. Hmm. Uh, and I, I give the example, my sister worked in Flagstaff, Arizona for many years, and I was just talking to her about this, and the entire school system in Flagstaff, Arizona got, got hit by hmm. ransomware, and 
they were advanced even with the passes to get them in the buildings and they were all locked out for days. They couldn't even get in their schools. So, and my son happens to work in this field and, and mm -hmm. this is serious. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. He actually works for this company, Box, and he works for Fortune 500 companies. And I said, you got any schools? I just, mm -hmm. I just saw them. And any schools in your company that yeah. do this? And yeah. he goes, yeah. yeah. You know how much this costs? Yeah. <laughs> schools couldn't, school districts Who couldn't afford, afford this. It. Mm -hmm. But we're taking it very seriously. Mm -hmm. Giovanna uh, is behind this 100%. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful, I'm going to actually be with Dan Hort tomorrow, because mm -hmm. we need uh, one community to sign off for this grant. I, I and uh, see if we can get this thing going in the right direction mm -hmm. and with state dollars. And mm -hmm. It's political. We're working with Sorry. our, our yeah, reps and, and our, of course, Julian and things like this. So we're optimistic, mm -hmm. and I think it's time. And mm -hmm. I'm talking to every board in this rotation about the seriousness of this going forward. Okay. Well, uh, last thing I'd like to share with you then um, is that uh, negotiations are uh, we're, we're really right on the edge of this of getting started. It's, it's uh, we're waiting to get some direction from Mark and, and Ann in terms of exactly how we're going to do this. Are we doing all of the unions? Are we going to be just looking at the teacher uh, union this year and do something else? So uh, we're having those conversations now. We're ready to go. We have our packets together. We have our seven or eight points that we want to share with uh, with our board members to consider and mm -hmm. so forth. The administrative team has had uh, numerous discussions. And, I, and I'm telling you, they were fantastic. Uh, we, to wrap it up, for instance, um, it was the only item on our last meeting, and I thought, this, if ever we're going to get out early, it's going to be this, because we've been talking about this for months. And we went 45 minutes late, and we had to shut it down, because I had to speak to the FinCon and Brewster within 10 minutes of getting out of the office. So um, we've really, um, uh, I think, done a bang-up job with some ideas. And we're looking to move the district forward, just like the teachers are doing the same thing. So I think it's going to be a, a, quite an experience. So thank you. All right. We are going to review the breakfast costs. Was that you, Mary Beth? Yeah. Yes. You skipped the budget? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chifani. That's okay. Budget review. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So before we begin the budget review, I just wanted to let the committee know that um, you know we did have um, an additional student that we had to send um, to the collaborative, so I have cost information on that. The bottom line does not reflect um, reclassifications to its. Um, certain um, revolving accounts that we had earmarked uh, to use in the fiscal 20 budget process. So take that into consideration, okay? okay. So as of this reporting, all of the um, utilities have been encumbered, all of the substitute line items have been encumbered, um, all the salaries have been encumbered, uh, except for um, some stipends um, and other small um, items. But for the most part, we've got everything that we need. We've encumbered all of the costs related to the two students. We've also encumbered the transportation. There's a little bit more of transportation expenses that we'll need to encumber, and we'll have that for next time because it's, it's an estimate right here. Okay. All right, so let's go to uh, page 7 of the report. And the minus sign. And the minus <laughs> sign. <laughs> I tried to avoid it. How do we get to that? Yeah, how do we get to that? Well, we have a, a, a negative uh, variance at this time of $14,807, mm -hmm. and that's due to the second student that right. we had to um, Income. uh, encumber yeah. for uh, at the collaborative placement. Um, so that's the, the tuitions. Uh, we also have the transportation costs in there for the student. Uh, but we still have not made the reclassifications of the expenses in this operating budget to the, um, the revolving accounts that we had utilized in FY19. Uh, we did uh, prepay some expenses in the fiscal 19 so that we could cover some of the costs 
related to the second student. We did prepay for um, pre-K, and we also prepaid um, some monies towards transportation. Okay, and that's all reflected in here. So the um, next time uh, we'll look at reclassifying, <coughs> if we can, if we if we have all the expenses in place, uh, reclassifying um, FY19 circuit breaker funds. We had um, earmarked. $28,216 from FY19 circuit breaker funds. We also have the FY19 tuition for the student from East Ham that's being educated here in Wellfleet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another um, $29,269. We also have the fiscal 20 tuition for the student, and that'll um, equate to $30,316. And we also have some... Um, uh, money earmarked to come out of building use of $2,700. So we have a total of $90,501 to be reclassified. Okay, so we're good there. And then we, we also will be receiving um, FY20 circuit breaker funds. That'll be an additional $37,118. And we will apply for extraordinary relief. Okay. So Arlen already did the calculations for us, um, and we're looking at approximately $46,000 of extraordinary relief that we would get in this fiscal year to offset these costs, so um, we're, we're going to be okay. Okay. Yes. What was the um, the circuit breaker for FY twenty that you're anticipating? Um, Thirty-seven thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars. Thank you. Okay. And I have the um, the calculations um, that Alan uh, provided me to mm -hmm. yeah, for the um, for the two students. So if we look at the, the chart. This whole, you know, just this one, one page. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the chart, um, we had um, budgeted for one student. So the first student we had budgeted um, $87,427. Um, the next student, the cost for the student number two, totaled $62,683. Um, so the total amount that hmm. the expenses for these two students one hundred fifty thousand one hundred eleven dollars without the transportation costs. Um, so if you look at what we had originally budgeted for student one was sixty three thousand three hundred and ninety six dollars. The total cost for both students is one hundred fifty thousand one hundred and eleven dollars, leaving us um, short eighty six thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars. Okay. And that's reflected on the uh, expenditure report that I just provided you. Um, so we've encumbered the, the transportation. Um, we're still waiting uh, for a final accounting from the collaborative. So we'll need to, we've already encumbered about $40,000 that we were short. Um, so we'll have to add an additional $9,700. But that, this is just an estimate. It's subject to change pending the, the final bills from the collaborative. Okay. Questions? May I ask Mary Beth if mm -hmm. that original student, which we've now had a couple of years, mm -hmm. is doing any better? Um, that's relative, Jan, because mm. of the diagnosis. Um, I think that this is going to be a significant lifelong disability mm -hmm. that's yeah. going to have life. Impacts. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to come back and be integrated in our school, but I was hoping for his sake and her sake and the parents yes, that yes. Um, it, it's been quite a challenge. Um, I've been using um, our REAP grant uh, because what happens at the collaborative is they're working on behavior modification um, so that students are successful in society. So what comes with that is the lack of academics. So there starts to be this gap and discrepancy. 
So I had offered at our spring meeting when I was there mm -hmm. because that was a real concern for the parent and a real concern for us. Yeah. So I was able to, with the REAP grant, hire a tutor who tutors a few hours a day, uh, Monday and Wednesday here at the school. Mm -hmm. But there are days that the student is unable to come. Mm -hmm. just is not available for learning. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing to try to keep that gap from... From being just all one-sided. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But REAP, I'm going to run out of REAP, so I'm not going to yeah. be able to provide that. Well, we got support. buses coming. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it, as long until that child becomes 12 years old, it's our financial responsibility until that point? No, 22. Yeah, where'd you Age get 22? Well, I meant our being the wealthy yeah. elementary oh. school. Mm. In theory, yes, it's but it's going to be as 22 yeah. years old for the system. For the whole system. And the same for the student that went out. And just, you know, the, the six students that we currently have, those would have been children that automatically went to the collaborative. <coughs> uh -huh. So, you know, we're doing our best to provide the appropriate programming um, as long as we can. Mm. So that just puts a nice perspective on it, really, because we've gained, we still have in our housing many students that might have that already been at the six. collaborative. That's right. what yes. she's yes. saying, right. six of so. them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just keep that in mind yeah. when we right. go into the budget right. season, because our percentage currently is up quite a bit. Yes. Um, and it's because of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Very expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Now we can do this. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to talk about that, Mary? Sure, and then I can give you some numbers as well. Okay, that's good. Um, last last time, um, I expressed my surprise at finding out that um, lunches, uh, breakfasts were a dollar fifty a piece for people, and. Um, we had in originally, of course, provided money um, for them. And at that point in the beginning, it was, I think, a bowl of cereal in the, uh, with milk. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, they could mm -hmm. come and have that. But once the Nauset system went to serving a real breakfast, mm -hmm. And then there was a price tag of a dollar fifty attached mm -hmm. to that, and of course it's a lot more. You can get yogurt and fruit oh, and all kinds of nice, yeah. nice things. Mm -hmm. But I, I have always been, <laughs> obviously, from looking at me, food is very important, and I know that food's important for children's learning. So I brought up who's paying for the ones that you know. And I guess where children get free lunch, they don't get free breakfast from the federal government. So I went to um, the Catholic Church's St. Vincent de Paul Society that provides help for, usually for families who need help with food, but mostly with rents and car repairs and things like that. And they gave me because I asked you how much would be nice, you said between two and three hundred dollars. So they gave me two hundred and fifty dollars. And they said if th you run out, that they will um, provide more. Lovely. And in the meantime, when I made my spiel, <laughs> um, one of the members of the group felt committed to adding another hundred dollars oh to gosh. that, wow. so we have three hundred and fifty oh wow. fifty dollars for breakfast. So isn't that Thank nice? That's and wonderful. and I think a um, just long as we remember it, a a constant supplier of help for that. Thank you. Okay. That's and, yeah. That's wonderful. And just so that you're aware, uh, the breakfast costs for last school year were $216. Oh, okay. And that was with 89 students, so now we have 108. Mm -hmm. So that will go. That will be that just will, about that, right. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Good. Good. I feel good about that. And I just wanted also to share the uh, free and reduced 
hmm. reimbursement that the, the school system receives. Last year, again, being 89 students, it was almost $18,000 for reimbursement. And the year before, that was just over 22000 Wow. Hmm. So thank you very, very much. Hmm. So perhaps I'll um, pen a little thank you yeah. note. That, that would be lovely. Sign it at the next school. Yeah. Is that too late to, to to wait a month to say thank you or? No, I don't we think so because they only meet once a month, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll make sure I get that thank for the you. next time. That'd yeah. be nice, Betsy. Um, anything else on? That's great. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mask conference. Um, we have our resolutions. I move that we ask Jill if she would please be our our delicate. I was going to ask Jan if no, she'd like to be Jan's the delegate. Not going this year. No, no you're no. not going. So no. I'm the only one that's no. going. Then on the school so. committee. Okay. Yep. I think it's um, would is you? that true? I just wanted to clarify. So is yeah, that true that Jill's the Jill's only one going, going to Jill's the going. conference? I'm going and I can't go for every day, so um, we have a family thing. Um, not Friday, but I, I have to be away on that Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it is Friday, if the meeting. That's when the yeah. delegates so, the meeting, no, I would the love voting. To but you have to be away on Friday, right? Did I hear you say you have to yeah, be away from? Yeah, so, so okay. I can't do it. You can't do it. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Maybe you can do it next year. Yeah, I think maybe as a committee we should start considering. <laughs> yeah. um, well, and I maybe I can have an expert. I okay. understand that, but I think she's ready to relinquish. Is oh. that what I'm hearing? I feel like I'm hearing that. Um, or it would be a nice break. I mean, I've been doing it for a lot of years, but um, clearly I, I will assume it this year except that I am waiting for a cancellation for surgery so this is somewhat in the time span where <coughs> if I get a cancellation I obviously can't go you will be going okay yeah so I'm happy to take it as long as I'm available you know to be the delegate um would you like me to continue on then about the resolutions why don't you and then I okay. wonder if we should have a backup plan I wonder if we should make a backup I don't know how plan. we can if nobody's going to be there well but it should it, be. Would it be possible for somebody to substitute for you? No, I don't no, think so. it's too late to like we'll, we'll do that. We'll let them know who's the board member. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Then let's um, move forward. What I would suggest for time efficiencies is, um, unless somebody disagrees with the resolutions that were submitted by the Massachusetts School Committee committee that deals with really teasing out these resolutions so just a quick review that there's committees that really research these resolutions so they've already been vetted and turned upside down and all that um, so I would suggest if you feel differently than what mass recommends to discuss it now maybe because also there's this is our last school committee meeting before right. the conference. Or I suppose it would be okay too for, some, for people to email me if you haven't had enough time to digest something if you feel differently than what they recommended. But it's some, I have question marks on a couple too. So and I'm not even sure I can answer them about. right now. But, well, okay, so why don't but we maybe Tom knows. Some, I, the, the, first, the first one for me, resolution two, um, I, I, I vote no for that. Um, that I didn't even have a question mark about. It's um, it, it's about licensing and I think they should still do it the right way even though it's difficult with minorities I still think the right way is the right way and not to change that. So You're asking my opinion? Uh, well no I'm well, just saying that's okay. my opinion. Maybe the committee could discuss. Go, yeah. go. I would disagree. Yeah, um, because I, I mean, one of the things that stuck out with me is that there's no evidence that it's a reliable measure of successful practice as an educator, and whereas it weeds out so many different people, um, just being in the field, I, I feel like um, I would just so so maybe we should hear from everybody on that one. 
more? What do you no, think? No, I, I have no thoughts about no it. No thoughts? Okay, but we do have to recommend a vote for Jill, so that's the only thing. <coughs> Martha? I certainly support it, and I actually had to underline those lines <coughs> were the ones that rang true for me as well. Um, having taught for many, many years, and having taken the MPELs the year before I left teaching, and passed them after many, many years of leading the department. I have to say, I don't think they were really a true picture of what I knew about education. Did you say they were or were not? They were not. They were not. Okay. And studying for them did not make me a better teacher. Mm -hmm. And the price of taking it, I mean, if you're just thinking about it in terms of the diversity, like it's not just that to do it or not do it, it's to expand the diversity of um, staff. Um, I'm outvoted again. How about number five? Um, I don't understand, I guess, and this year I thought maybe Tom could um, transportation costs for students in, in foster care and state care. I can certainly empathize that they need to have transportation, but if every every single child moving in foster care is having their own bus pick them up and stuff, the expense of that, it just seems to me it would be so incredible. I'm in favor of it. <laughs> I just feel like you know, they may or may not move forward. I mean, this is just mask is going to bring these sure. things up, and I think we, it, it happens before, and they end up being very philosophical things in many times. Um, but in terms of, you know, students who are, it, it, it's the district can't, you know, control where our students, we want to educate these students who are, you know, sometimes picked up in the middle of the night and brought to a foster care. and. Um, shouldn't they be able to return to one consistent thing in their life without it penalizing really like the funding or the budget of the system and um, that's the way I you know just from being on the inside um, that's the way I feel about it does anybody else want to talk well I think it would affect the funding of, of, for the system would it not but Am isn't I it saying reading it I thought the funding would then, they're asking for the funding to come from yeah. the, the, the government. Elsewhere? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. The state. Okay. The uh, Commonwealth should receive reimbursement for transportation expenses under Title 40. Okay. That'll help. So are we, you know, do we have anything, that. okay, do we have anything else to debate? I, I don't want to just make it so that after one person talks, we've made a consensus. So I almost want us to return, because we didn't hear from everybody around two. We've heard from three of us around two, and I just think if we're guiding Jill how to vote, that everybody should have a turn to, to say. So Martha, I'm not sure, did you, had, you did, you were in favor of two? I agree. And Jill, what about you, Are you as a member and not the voter? As somebody who visits a lot of schools, I sometimes am amazed that no matter what the testing and credentials are, it's all about relationships. And um, I tend to be in favor of this resolution. All right. And then more, I just, I understand that well, you don't want to. Well, there's, some of it just seems beyond what I, my understanding. I'm not a numbers person, so I look at it and think, what? Mm -hmm. So I'm but, not opposed to any of these. Okay. Okay. So then we can move on. Jan, was there another one you wanted <coughs> to talk about? Did anybody else want to discuss any of the others to guide? So if we're not, this, I guess, do you feel like you know how to vote for us, Jill? Yes. Thank you. I've got guidance. Okay. <laughs> and um, perhaps next year I can work out something where I can see how that works. 
All right, so having done that, we are on to reports and information. And uh, do you have a Cape Cod Collaborative report? I do. Um, I went to the meeting in September, and there is a meeting tomorrow, but I'm not going to it uh, for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons is it's going to be in Falmouth, and it's just going to take forever to drive home. Yeah. You can get there from here. <laughs> I know Unless I could be a supplied bus, <laughs> bus services. Um, okay, well, speaking of buses, the collaborative has taken on all that transportation that we're aware of, and the latest count is uh, the collaborative is overseeing 192 vehicles mm -hmm. and over 200 square miles. <laughs> wow. um, Talk about community collaboration. The school in Osterville had a renovation with their playground, which is also open to the community. And uh, kudos, apparently, to the Barnstable DPW that did a lot of work for the collaborative on that playground. The uh, leadership program at Mass Maritime was a big success this summer. Uh, the students had 56 hours of STEM. And uh, for the non-science humanities piece of it, there was uh, an improvisa uh, improvisation class, a critics' corner class, and already they're working on next year. Mm. Um, there's a new position that started later last fall. Oh, wait, it is fall. Okay, this fall. Um, Anders Erickson is an operations manager with all the different roles and responsibilities that the collaborative has expanded in doing, you know, since they're sensitive to the needs of all the school districts that belong to the collaborative and just keep growing and growing as far as needs of the various schools that belong. A new position uh, needed to be formed, and once again, it is operations manager and uh, Anders Erickson seems to be matched well to the task but it's a big one. Um, sadly, uh, well not sadly but it's complicated the Waypoint Alternative High School program. You know the Wing School and Sandwich has been an option but there's been another bidder and it's been put off mm. until the spring mm. and the lease is finishes in the spring, so yeah. it's pretty dicey. Mm -hmm. It's hard to plan, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so there's other possibilities. So, for instance, the Upper Cape Regional Technical School, in the rear of the property might be an option. Another option, the YMCA has been quite open and positive in coming to the collaborative saying that possibly Camp Burgess or the South Shore YMCA could be an option for the alternative school. Um, or, I'm not familiar with it, but the Hayward campus, or Camp Hayward in Sandwich. Uh, and jumping to a totally different topic, um, on this coming Friday, October 11th, is the All Cape Professional Development Day. Um, and that tends to help the needs of professional development of more specialty areas. Mm -hmm. So for instance, there are a number of early childhood, pre-K to grade one workshops coming up, art, music, world language, counselors, intervention specialists, school nurses, ELL, library media, PE, and health. So total, there's 28 workshops coming up this Friday. It's a professional development day, Friday, and yes. not here. Not here. Yeah. For it used to be all Cape. Yes. Yeah, I thought that different it was. districts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, we passed the transportation handbook. You want it? I have one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we call monthly. Hey, it's quite the opus. A lot of content. A lot of um, yes, <laughs> procedures and protocols. Working well, though. Uh, it, the name of the game in transportation is drivers, yeah. right? and having enough drivers, yeah. and that's an issue. And, yes. And uh, I think that it's safe to say NOSET has been very, very considerate of 
um, neighboring schools having trouble getting drivers. And uh, one of the pieces is retention of drivers. And it's a critical piece in terms of the process takes a long time to get your license. And uh, I know that the, the collaborative is certainly well aware. I mean, one of the points that even this summer is my conversations with Paul, are you expanding any more beyond Monomoy, which I understand. He had told me, no, this is it, this is enough. Because when you don't have drivers, yeah, mm -hmm. what can, yeah. you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. And, and I'll be very honest with you. I, uh, we, we brought in our dispatcher um, because from the beginning we wanted our dispatcher to be in a position where she could answer problems immediately and mm. we were taking care of it. It happens that she has a license. Mm. You and put her in the, in the bus. Unfortunately, Monomoy was in a situation, and I understand they got to pick up kids. That she really was driving for Monomoy, hmm. um, and it put us back relative. But you know, I think Paul has got a handle on this, and and he's gonna he's gonna work through this. But this can't happen again. It's hmm. we, and I know that we're gonna be kicking in with a bonus program for drivers who sign up to work for us. And so I think there's some answers there, but it's it's tight. Yeah, I, I wondered about that because you hear things about other places that are having so much trouble. I mean, drunk drivers and falling asleep and leaving children on the bus over, you know, a period of hours. And I mean, so obviously it's very difficult to get really competent people. So I, I can tell you that I, I think we got a wonderful group drivers and really do. They're just great people. And they and and I think one of our re re recruitment pieces is sometimes people want to drive more than just what our buses are running on their school yeah. bus. Uh -huh. So we were involved in the uh, concert at Nasset Beach. And, and and it's a Saturday where drivers can make some Pick additional up extra money, money. Right? Mm -hmm. And we want to get back in with the Oyster Fest right. in terms of that. <laughs> yeah. um, we're yeah. actually Giovanna is pushing me all over the place to see if we can use the buses in the summer baseball program. Um, so and they get park in our parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. so it's complicated, Satellite. and uh, <laughs> and uh, and we uh, we appreciate what Paul has, has to go through, but we also you know we we, 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 keep we have an expectation pressure. of what yeah. we want. Yes. And and Linda's I don't know if, if some of you stop by the trail. She's a wonderful and she's she's torn in about eight different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's so I, I think uh, I have some ideas. Giovanna has some ideas about the retention issues in terms of uh, hiring Drivers. things like that and, and we want to help. Mm -hmm. um, in Hyannis today we were following a bus <coughs> a bus and the sign on the back said we're looking for Excellent drivers. Mm -hmm. Excellent and big letters. Did you apply? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just Jan, uh, I mean, Jill, anything else no. from your report? <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, preschool enrollment? Mm -hmm. it's, in the, it's in the book. Yep, we saw it. I bet everybody misses Nancy. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but is yeah. she happy? She is very happy yeah. Where is she doing? in East Ham. Well, They're at East Ham, and just having all of the support staff oh, yeah. readily yeah. available uh, has been, has been helpful. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. She's very happy. Oh, good. that's good. But we miss her. Yeah. We, we stay in very close contact. She's good. Terrific. She is terrific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, any further comments, questions about preschool enrollment? Good? Okay. Um, so the PTA report, um, one thing that the Wellfleet Elementary School PTA has decided this year is to alternate their meetings from um, evening and afternoon right after school, um, which makes it impossible for me to get there. So I'll be able to attend some of them. So as the liaison, I'm, I won't be able to attend all the meetings, in which case um, Mary Beth was kind enough to get me minutes or else if she's been at the if meeting, I, yeah. you know, we'll, we may take turns on the report. Right, and I don't know if I'll be able to make the afternoon meetings either because I already have scheduled meetings, but I will try. Yeah, but they are hoping to get more attendance from the, the parents, and I think that's... That's what it's all about. It's not about if the liaison can get there. <laughs> um, so um, one of the biggest things is, I'm sure we are, I think we reported on it last mm -hmm, time, but mm -hmm. the, the switching of the spaghetti supper, and I think we did get an email to help out yeah. if we could. 
Um, and so they, you know, did a little bit of um, business on that. Um, let me just see if there's anything here. Um, so they have new, they're just appointing new people that have uh, to work on like the, um, getting the raffle together and that. And, but then also Charity is still going to be um, in charge of the Spaghetti Supper Committee. Um, and so will Sarah Tanner. So then we've got some experience there where they have done it last year. Um, so then they just discussed raffles ideas. Um, they are starting a new method for the box tops. Um, so now they used to have people send in the tops to school and now there's an app that you can get on your phone so you can scan receipts so that's going to make it easier than somebody counting all those little tops. Um, and um, you can certainly still send them in um, until they're expired but no longer are we sending those actual hard copies back to the company. Um, the PTA is going to order new books for the PTA book nook um, and then decorate it and so there's um, books that are going to be coming in next week and and they're Packages made available expected. for people, for students to take. Yeah. Hmm. So, it's, so there's like parenting books there too, right? Mm -hmm. There's It's like a gently used, yes. you can bring some books yes. in if you, um, which then I will be going through some books. <laughs> <laughs> um, Live Well Fleet, the bumper stickers, is that, oh, is it expanding to include other products? Um, and they're hoping to have these available at the Spaghetti Supper to sell them there. Um, so then I talked about the meetings. Okay, so executive board positions. Um, the executive board members right now are in their last term, so they're talking about approaching families with younger children in the school. Um, there's been a couple of people mentioned so far, um, and they did discuss charity. Seems like she's willing to continue um, if needed. Yes, she. Um, the regulations say that the current president can do an additional year if somebody else doesn't step up. Mm -hmm. So then we have to work on that. Um, and then there was an open forum where a school dance was discussed, and so she's going to check into it. Mm -hmm. um, their next meeting is on November twelfth, and I did not get a. We didn't get a. Um, Expense. No, they'll have now. that soon. They didn't have that available. Okay, so they didn't have their own. Okay, so that's that, and we'll just kind of make our best with that situation um, for this year. Um, strategic plan committee, I believe we've heard from extensively. Um, substance abuse, then, Martha, do you have the task force? Um, it's actually the Mental Health Substance Abuse Task Force. Um, we have not met. We're meeting on October 21st. And I know that there has been some conversation about joining forces with the Wellness Committee, um, but we have not met since before the summer. So okay. We will be meeting. All right. And has the Wellness met? Yes, today, but I was busy with other things, so I could not go. Okay. Did, did but it did go, and... Um, Sue was there. I wish she was able to stay because I don't know what the outcomes were. Oh, okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. But yeah. um, I, Mrs. Croson did say it was a great meeting. I just didn't have an opportunity to talk with her about what about, they discussed. Um, maybe I can find out and report next Catch us up the next time. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and then we just have this running item about future agenda items. So um, does anybody want to discuss that? Yeah, I just wanted to um, say that maybe sometime we should talk about climate change here. Um, okay. Okay. As okay. as a, a you know a, a committee that is advocating for it, I know they're working on it in um, school with the children and stuff, and I think um, that's one of the things the town is working on very diligently and um, maybe even we could liaison with the energy committee and climate change people in town and I, I just think we should have a policy or a, 
a position or something about it. Okay, can you just silent dig in a little subject. bit on it? So for, for, are you thinking more in terms of like our energy use in the building? Um, are you talking about educating the kids? I just, I'm not exactly yeah, I'm talking sure. Ab I'm talking about all of it. All that of it. we should be very conscious about our carbon footprint and everything else. And um, I, it may be is being covered well with the children because I know it is has been brought up. But I just think a school committee should have, in this day and age, should have some kind of policy okay. about how it feels about climate change and trying to minimize um, the effect. Okay. All right. Um, so I will... I may reach out to you in an email. I just feel like if it's going to be an agenda item, we may want yeah. to, it, because it's such a large topic, we may yeah. want to do like a piece of it here, a piece of it there. I didn't know. My first thought was, does it connect to one of those um, goals on the strategic plan? Yes, it's, it's under global um, education. So global education, um, and I'm wondering. Sustainability. Okay. That's really yeah. what, what and so perhaps um, getting in touch with somebody in town, or getting perhaps, feedback or from that working group right. on occasion. We could, you know, we could also do that. Do that, that would that, be another that thing that we could fun. do. So, yeah. um, okay. Thank you. Did anybody yeah. else? Have yes. Oh, go ahead. I was just wondering, you might want to serve on that subcommittee Maybe. about the climate. Yeah. And just another random thought. I know, as um, a contracted part-time seasonal worker for Wellfleet Bay Sanctuary. I know that <laughs> a staff meeting I went to ages ago that they have been designing or discussing anyway um, appropriate, developmentally appropriate curriculum about climate change. So that would be perhaps another, even for the subcommittee, another partnership yeah, working with Audubon uh, because I know that they already have had, you know, I've been out of touch since for a while, um, but my gosh, that was uh, maybe a year and a half ago about the curriculum and developmentally appropriate. Well, they come to the school and yeah. come to the library yeah. and they yeah. run some fantastic programs. So, so we don't have to reinvent but, the no, curriculum of course not, and but whatnot. But maybe yeah. they're not talking about climate when they come. Maybe, oh, sometimes, okay. See, we were talking about it, how we could incorporate it in our walks. So our marsh walks, our tidal flats walks, developmentally appropriate. Yeah. 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 And okay. Another future future agenda yeah. for me would be uh, elementary school IB. Elementary school IB. I, elementary school I would like international. international. Oh, IB. Yep. Yeah. Of, of our grandchildren, <clears throat> um, not necessarily the smartest one, is getting international baccalaureate in middle school, and she's getting fantastic education. So it's really got me excited about the Good, idea. Yeah. Be nice to, and she's not the smartest, but she's getting really better education than any of the others. Yes. Just to add to Maud's point, I think, uh, and I can have this information so you have some background, I think there are 19 students in our elementary schools who travel to Provincetown for the mm -hmm. International Baccalaureate Program. Yeah. 19. Right. Yeah. We've lost more for that, I think, than any. 19 students across the district, yes. not just what? Just the elementary schools. Yeah, yeah. 19 yeah. students elementary schools. I would very much like to take a trip to Provincetown. Yeah, so I, I, I um, as you know, I was hot to trot on this, quite honestly, and I have been to Framingham, and Framingham's got a really interesting program. And, uh, we went with you. We were with That's you. That's right. <laughs> it just seems like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that... Uh, What's your name? Uh, we yeah. made a great splash. I mean, I, it's, it's sensitive to work with Provincetown, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, and, and I, I'm anxious to meet the new superintendent. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to do some research on it to see mm -hmm. yeah, we can what, get that. when I can talk about it in here and see where we can go. All right. Anything else? I would also like to suggest we put the bus question, bus parking question mm. on the agenda. Oh. Yeah. 
And one thing we did speak about was um, in, the, in the summer or late spring was uh, self-evaluation for the school community. And while I hate to bring it up, I think I must. Okay, we've got a lot of future agenda items. Not for November. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, I, um, I just hope that you will um, allow me to work with Tom to come up with, you know, we'll try to coordinate what, you know, we mm -hmm. must do's and mm -hmm. then maybe mm -hmm. conversations that might be nice to have in relationship. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we're going to keep this, I'll just keep that bullet there so that if you feel like yours has not come up and you're anxious for it too, you can remind me, but I'll keep my notes and um, sure. we'll do our best to cycle through some conversations this year. Yeah. Back to the to my name, I can't think of the name. The woman who was asking for the bus. Suzanne. Thing. Suzanne. Suzanne. Um, the buses have been parking over by the Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. and the people in in that who have stores in that place are very upset about mm -hmm. the parking coming in there. It may not be just the buses. They think that somebody is telling people oh, well, if you need parking, go over to Dunkin' Donuts and there'll be a bus there that will take you to the... I mean, all kinds of things like that have been going on and they are not happy about it. Mm -hmm. we, we should, I think we all have concerns. Yeah. I think we should have a good discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, well, I think I had already wrote that from um, mm -hmm. before she left. I mm -hmm. promised that we would talk about it so that we can get back to her. Her deadline's February, so mm -hmm. that will definitely be on. Pretty sure it'll be on next one. That's we have mm. too much celebrating to do. About it. Mm -hmm. no. um, okay, minutes. Did yeah, anybody I've, have any? I have a question or a correction on the bottom, near the bottom of the second page. About Jan Plow, we read the article in the Cape Cod Times. <clears throat> Either I'm, be, I don't know if I'm beginning disagreeing with Jan or with the way you wrote the minutes. <laughs> The article was not negative. The article was very supportive of our building plans and the money that we need. What was wrong about the editorial was it said Truro right. was a member of this NASA committee, but not Wellfleet. So it's inexcusable that somebody in a local paper writing an editorial about our housing, about our building program, doesn't know that Wellfleet's in it, but it was a very supportive article. It was a very negative article. Oh. Very negative article because I, it talked about how much Brewster was against it and how much difficulty yeah. it's going to be getting it through Brewster and because it's all four towns that have to agree to do this, um, that Brewster is going to be a stumbling block. That uh, was what it was all about, and uh, I found that very negative because I was reading between the Yeah, I didn't read lines, it that way. So, yeah. okay. <clears throat> they I, did bring up the Brewster problem, but yeah. I, the, I, have, I, I, I find no fault with her minutes. <laughs> um, there you go, Ann. Mm -hmm. Now you know what to do. Well, that was, you know, my point. That was what you said. That was yeah. what so I said. So that's an accurate yeah. reporting. Yeah. Right. Yeah? Right. Okay. Anything else? I need. I move we um, approve the minutes. All in favor? All right. I think that you need unanimous. a second. I think. Right. I think you need a second. Okay. I second. Thank you. Yeah. Vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. A motion to adjourn. Oh, I move that we adjourn. <laughs> a second. What would you do if I wasn't here? And have you been paying them? I will pay them when I get home. Oh, yep, okay. I got my call. Okay. I'm going to go back.